Hi, back to these questions. I've been answering some of these. These are cards that were submitted at a retreat called Impact for City, City Gospel Mission for teenagers, but this is for adults and, and children alike. But I'm gonna shuffle them up just for the fun of it. And uh, I like to just kind of like, just right on the spot, you know, I haven't read these. I mean, sometimes I glanced at a couple of these like the top one earlier. Anyway, it says this, um, why didn't God stop sin when he knew it? Okay, I know where the, that's a good question. Uh, why didn't he God, God stop sin when he knew ahead of time uh, that he was going to, uh, you know, that we're going to sin. Why didn't he just stop it? Well, because of free will. He didn't make robots and he didn't want robots, but he knew ahead of time, didn't he? So why did he allow it to happen? Hmm. It's a great question. Um, I will say this. I wanted to write on the board for a second, but I will say this, that if I had a choice, if I had a choice of having, let's say, I don't know, 20 kids, and I knew that ahead of time that 19 of those kids we're going to be horrible and haters of me and cause great pain and grief and sorrow and anguish in me. Lots of weeping and, and all. Yet one of those children out of those 20 that I have a great relationship that I can love that person and generously benefit that person and be, I see that person happy and all. I would do it. Oh man, I'm tearing up here. That's a, fa that's a father's heart. It was worth him going through immense, infinite pain, 24 seven for thousands of years, and maybe for eternity, I don't know. I mean, I, some would disagree with that, but I think in the back of deep in the heart of God, there's gonna be this pain for those who reject him, which is millions upon millions. Most people do not get to heaven, sorry. All right, um, so the fact is, um, it was worth it for him to allow sin to come into the world. So the, what I was gonna do as a timeline brief, I hope you can see this, and let's say this is Adam and Eve, and this is the end of time. And there is going to be an end of time where God sits outside of time. He sits over here, and the Bible says in Isaiah, he inhabits eternity. Think about that. He lives in eternity. Whatever that means, like he's outside of time, space, matter. Wow, it's fantastic. Or how about Psalm 90, the only psalm that was written by Moses. Verse 2, it says, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. To me, that means from everlasting this way and to everlasting this way. He's God. So there's never been a beginning, never an end, Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and end. I mean, it's fantastic. We're not talking about that, but let me just say this. God decided that knowing that Adam and Eve would sin because he knew it was going to happen. It's happened before them with probably his name was Lucifer, according to Isaiah 14, if that was the devil in that passage. Very probable, possible. Um, anyway, whatever his name, there was an angel that fell and Jesus said, I saw lightning. I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. Um, sin started up here and he knew all that was going to happen. Why did he do it? He allowed it. Because, well, there's a lot to this. He knew he was going to do it. He knew he was going to go through this. Eventually, sin's going to stick up its ugly head, let's say. And um, so he allowed it to happen so that later so that this would be a huge um, lesson and a huge revelation truly on how good he is and how merciful and how he loves us. He's committed to his uh, creation. Like the Bible says in Peter, he says he's a faithful creator. So all this is a revelation of God. You would never know how deep God's love is if there was no sin and evil. Because it's easy, if you think of it this way, it's kind of easy to love good people. But what about the evil, the wicked, the horrible? The selfish. Whew. So he allowed sin so that the cross would happen. Can you see that right there? In the in the timeline of God, he he sent Jesus on the cross so that he could forever put down rebellion, destroy it, so that at the end of time he's still allowing it to go on for a time. Until for the end of time, then the Bible says in, in 2 Peter chapter 3 that when he makes a new heaven and an earth, it, it dwells righteousness. It's continual, perpetual righteousness. No sin. Yay. There's no tempter. He's put down. Um, there's no rebellion. That's put down. The sins were forgiven for all those who accepted it from here to all the way here. And the time, boom, there's no sin. So he allows this whole thing. Even though he knew it was going to happen, he knew it was going to happen. He deliberately did it for that knowledge so that he could forever put it down so that we could forever have it never raising its head again. <laughs> it's great stuff, isn't it? 
I don't know. That's that's part of it. Um, part of it is to reveal his mercy. You can't know the mercy really of God, his forgiveness, unless you've sinned to be have a sin to be forgiven and pardoned. So he allows it. Um, there was a false teaching going around in the days of Paul, and he said that Paul was saying, because of the grace of God and the mercies of God, that, oh, so that we should deliberately do evil, that good may come. He said, no way, God forbid. Are you kidding? Absolutely not. God doesn't instigate sin. He's not tempting us to sin. He doesn't tempt for evil, the Bible says in James chapter 1. So, but he allows it all. So just like a, a, a father and mom, you know, they have kids knowing that they're going to screw up. But the love trumps that sin, trumps it. You know, he's going to have kids because he, he wants that relationship. I hope that helps. That's a great question. God bless you. By the way, if you want to ask other questions, feel free to write in the comments or make your own comments. Um, we'd love to hear from you. All right.